Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel, and I just got one question for you. Are you ready to rap? <laughs> That's right, just like Joan Jett sang all those years ago, I love rock and roll. So drop another dime in the jukebox, baby. Rock and roll means something different to everyone, and for a lot of us, we may not even be able to articulate the intimate relationship that we have with it. That's why I'm glad that over the years, filmmakers have devoted entire films to capturing or communicating what music means to them, and by extension, what it means to all of us. Yeah, true music, uh, not just rock and roll, it chooses you. You know, it lives in your car, or, or alone, listening to your headphones, you know, with the vast scenic bridges and angelic choirs in your brain. You know, it's a place apart from the vast, benign lap of America. These films can take many forms, whether it's fly-on-the-wall documentaries that capture key moments in rock and roll history, or traditional narrative films about a particular artist, whether real or fictional. They can even take the form of comedy and satire. That's how versatile the cinematic medium is, and that's how universal the themes of rock and roll are. And so it's in that spirit that I humbly submit my, uh, not top 10 concert films or top 10 biopics or movies with rock and roll in them or movies entirely set to rock and roll soundtracks, but my top 10 films about rock and roll. Damn. Let's get started. Number 10 is That Thing You Do, a fun and breezy fictional account of a one hit wonder band called The Wonders who burn brightly and then burn out on the strength of that title song. Now, not only is that song written by Adam Schlesinger of the group Fountains of Wayne, catchy as all hell, it kinda has to be since you're gonna hear it over and over and over throughout the whole movie, but the movie is probably the most fun story of failure that you'll ever see on screen. Now, there's another one of those a little higher up on this list, but we'll get there. As Tom Hanks' character puts it, the one hit wonder is a very common tale, but with strong appealing performances by the likes of Tom Everett Scott, Steve Zahn, Ethan Embry, and Hanks, who also directed, this is probably the most entertaining version of that most common tale. Number nine is School of Rock, a movie that doesn't just express what rock and roll means, it teaches it to the younger generation. Jack Black, in the role he was simply born to play, is Dewey Finn, a rock and roll guitarist who gets fired from his band on the brink of their success because he's too wrapped up in rock star glory. Only through taking a job as a substitute music teacher does he finally get to simultaneously learn and then instill the real lesson. One great rock show can change the world. And it ain't about you, or fame, or glory. It's about the music, man. Number eight is The Commitments, the story of a rock band. All right, technically it's a soul band, but really, is there anything more rock and roll than this story of an Irish band who assembles and then through infighting, bad financial deals, random hookups, jealousy, and egos, breaks up just at the moment where they might have gotten their big break? I don't think so. And like that thing you do, it's got huge rewatch potential and a real sense of fun. It also launched the career of, among others, Glenn Hansard, who would go on to star in and win an Oscar for writing the music for one of my favorite film musicals, Once. That's him in the middle there. The Irish are the blacks of Europe, and Dubliners are the blacks of Ireland. So say it once, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Indeed. Indeed. Number seven is La Bamba the 1987 biopic about Richie Valens that stands out here as an example of what rock and roll stardom can do, not to the rock and roll star, but to his family. Lou Diamond Phillips is indeed great as up-and-comer Valens, but the real story is the effect that his sudden stardom has on his envious brother, played brilliantly by Isai Morales, and the momentous grief that follows when Valens dies in a plane crash on what singer Don McLean would later refer to as the day the music died in the classic song, American Pie. Of the two films depicting that fateful night, the other being the Buddy Holly story starring Gary Busey as Buddy Holly, this one is far superior. Number six is Anvil, the story of Anvil, a documentary about a legendary and hugely influential metal band, but one that I had never heard of. This film contains a few accounts from huge metal stars like Slash and Lars Ulrich and that dude from Anthrax about how Anvil were pioneers of heavy metal and the film traces their highs and lows, all right, mostly lows, as the band, led by Steve Lips Kudlow, just refuses to quit. Not even in the face of a seemingly indifferent public, tours where everything goes wrong, promoters who refuse to pay them, audiences that never even show up, and everything in between. If School of Rock taught its lesson of doing it all for the music instead of the fame through a work of light-hearted scripted comedy, then Anvil, the story of Anvil, teaches the same lesson using cold, unsentimental doses of harsh reality. Now, now I know that there's a contingent of people that see a list of the top 10 films about rock and roll and they immediately ask themselves, 
All right, so how high on the list is a hard day's night gonna be? Well, guess what? It didn't even make the list. As fun as that early dose of Beatlemania is, it's nowhere near illuminating about the Beatles as my choice for number five, Let It Be, the film that documents with unflinching honesty the final days of the greatest rock and roll band of all time. Uh, you wanna debate it? All right, well, there's the comment section. Let me have it. Far from the boyish camaraderie they had displayed a mere six years earlier in their film debut, six years between A Hard Day's Night and Let It Be, well, as Ron Burgundy would say, that escalated quickly. Because here they are, a group of tired, irritated, and isolated men who can barely seem to stand each other. That is, that is, until they start playing music together. It's beautiful, and when they start playing, you can tell that the music, the music is the uniting force. These guys discuss, they argue, and you don't see the moment that George Harrison walks out and quits the band, but you can sense it when it happens. There is just so much tension in the air as they're working out the kinks of the album that would be let it be. But then, but then the film culminates in what would end up being the Beatles' final public performance on the roof of the Abbey Road Studios while onlookers climbed buildings and craned their heads to watch and collected down on the street during their lunch hours. You see these absolute legends simply plug in their instruments and start rocking as a tight unit one last time. Now someday, Let It Be will be released on DVD, I'm sure. Apparently it's being held back because of the negative portrayal of the band. Go figure. In the meantime, uh, this being the age of the internet, find some other way to see it? I won't tell anybody. And I recommend you seek it out. Number four is that, now I, I bet you were expecting Woodstock to be somewhere on this list. That documentation of the concert that defined the summer of love and set a new high watermark for youthful, experimental rock and roll freedom. And, and Woodstock, the movie, as long as it is, as full of great concert performances as it is, does all of that and more. But my pick for number four is more fascinating, and that's Gimme Shelter, the documentary that captures the moment when all of that optimism that flew so high began to come crashing down to earth. If you haven't heard of it, Gimme Shelter documents the disastrous free concert at the Altamont Speedway in December of 1969, which was mostly known for excessive violence and even four deaths, one of which was a stabbing captured on film that made the final cut of this movie. It's actually shown twice, once as it happens in the moment, and then once more as the band sits in an editing bay watching the raw footage with grim shot looks on their faces. The concert came just a few months after the triumph of Woodstock, and you can tell the shadow of that event loomed large over the rock and roll world at that time. Everybody seemed to want to create the next Woodstock and keep chasing that high. We follow the Rolling Stones while on their US tour, trying to put together a simple free concert in San Francisco that will rival the one that happened in New York. Throughout the film, we see the warning signs as danger starts to accumulate. People start changing the venues and lawyers get involved and negotiations go right up to the very last minute. We never see who decided to hire the Hells Angels motorcycle gang as security for the stage for a reported $500 worth of beer. But as the film progresses towards its conclusion, including some great live footage of the Rolling Stones and one performance by Ike and Tina Turner that is actually pretty red hot, we see warning sign after warning sign that before long, the concert will descend into a nightmare. Mick Jagger gets punched in the face by a fan moments after getting off the chopper. The stage is built too low. The drunken bikers start beating the snot out of anyone who gets near the stage, including, at one point, one of the actual members of Jefferson Airplane, who's trying to perform. The Grateful Dead arrive, then they hear about the situation, and they immediately bone out of there. And then the Rolling Stones take the stage, and the place really devolves into violent chaos. And not the fun kind of chaos, either. It's the ugly underbelly of unbridled freedom. Or to paraphrase Hunter S. Thompson, if you watch Gimme Shelter with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see the high watermark. That place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. And in case you're wondering about the timeline, the previous film on this list, Let It Be, was released in May of 1970. Gimme Shelter was released in December of 1970. Great year for rock documentaries, but maybe not the best year for rock and roll. In fact, was 1970 the year that rock and roll started to die? It's just a shame you missed out on rock and roll. It's over. Over? It's over. I mean, you got here just in time for the death rattle. Last gasp. Well, that's grope. At least I'm here for that. Oh, don't worry, Lester Bangs. We'll get to you soon enough. But not before we sort of lighten things up around here. It seems that while we started out light and fun, this list took a heavy turn near the middle. So without further ado, let's turn this list of 10 all the way up to 11 with my number three pick. This is Spinal Tap. Yay! Now this film is nothing less than a classic comedy about rock and roll indulgence, a lampooning of the outlandishness of rock and roll in general, and quite simply, one of the greatest comedies of all time. This pioneering rockumentary follows around the fictional rock band Spinal Tap on their disastrous tour. Look, 
You've probably seen this one already, and if you have, you're probably just nodding along with me waiting for the next one. This is the movie that actual rock bands used to watch over and over while on long bus rides on tour, and it's so quotable, so hilarious, you're probably thinking of your favorite scene right now. Now, 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 now mine? Oh, I love the one where the band gets lost on their, on their way to the stage. <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, how about the one where, where Derek Smalls gets stuck in the gigantic egg prop and he, and he can't get out? <laughs> no, 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 no. How about the one where they make the, the, the Stonehenge prop set piece too small and then it comes floating down and it's like, it's like this big? <laughs> uh, all right, uh, all right. Uh, you get the idea. All right, now that we've all had a good laugh, uh, is everybody in? Is everybody in? The ceremony is about to begin. You know, or the doors. Uh, Jim Morrison? He's a drunken buffoon, posing as a poet. I like the doors. Ah, uh, give me the guess who. Hey, I like Jim Morrison too. And I especially like Oliver Stone's masterpiece, The Doors, which I place on my list as number two overall and the best musical biopic I have ever seen. Leave it to the trippy stylist Oliver Stone to put you in the mindset of a man who was very clearly, at least at the end, out of his mind. I'm the Lizard King! I can do anything! Val Kilmer's brilliant performance crafts a Jim Morrison who is complicated, difficult, and heck, maybe even a little overrated, but always fascinating. The Rise and Fall of the Doors is a dizzying ride through insane drug trips, hallucinations, frustrating glimpses of brilliance, experimentation, personal freedom, hubris, self-destruction, and ultimately, a graceful and poetic come down. And if you're looking for the definition of a poetic come down, then look no further than this scene from, and I've been dropping hints all along here, my number one pick, the one that sums up everything explored in these other movies, from innocent unrequited love, to the lure of fame and glory, bickering bandmates, newfound independence, the loss of innocence, and above all, the unifying power of the love of music. Tell them what it's all about, Sapphire. I mean, they don't even know what it is to be a fan. You know, to truly love some silly little piece of music or some band so much that it hurts. Yes, the number one movie about rock and roll is Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous, a fictionalized account of Crowe's early years writing for Rolling Stone magazine as a teen. Though it may be fictionalized, his journey is so real it hurts right, right in there. Almost Famous is about first love. It's about coming into your own as a person and doing it to a heavy metal soundtrack. It's about meeting the people that provide that soundtrack and seeing them for the flawed people that they are instead of the idols that you think they are. But mostly, and this is why it's the easiest and best choice for number one movie about rock and roll, it's about the music, man. And whether your film is about the Beatles or the Wonders or the Commitments or the kids attending the School of Rock, it always comes back to a pure love of music. Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your own personal lists of the top 10 films about rock and roll in the comments section as well. And if you want to fight me on the Beatles being the best band of all time, go ahead. I'm ready. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. And for those about to rock, I salute you.